What chance does UNC have to get this win? I think they've got a great chance. Uh, they're Belichickian in terms of everyone does their job. The pieces fit. You think about R.J. Davis since he's been put with the ball in his hands, all of a sudden the offense runs better. Why does it run better? Because he facilitates. Brady Maddox knocking down jumpers. Caleb Love gets the ball when he's ready to shoot it. He's done a great job of putting Armando Baycott in ball screens. He hits him on the roll. Uh, Leaky Black defends. The pieces fit for this North Carolina team. And they don't have the pressure that Duke has because, you know what, the NCAA tournament's been about the team. Now all of a sudden it's Duke and Carolina, Coach K's last dance. It's going right back to being about Coach K. Can he win it? Can he win that sixth national championship? Can he separate himself? So uh, I look at this North Carolina team. They're defending at an elite level, only giving up 66 points a game. Uh, defensively, from the field, they're giving up 36% from the field, 26 from the three-point line. They're in a stance. They keep the ball in front. They contest shots. They're connected defensively. And then offensively, they're Belichickian. Everyone does their job. Coach, as you look at this matchup, obviously Duke fell flat at Cameron Indoor in what was arguably the biggest regular season game in the history of Duke basketball. What adjustments do the Blue Devils need to make on this stage? Yeah, Jordan, they got to guard that middle ball screen. Uh, I thought Carolina absolutely exploited them in that middle third ball screen with R.J. Davis and Armando Baycott and sometimes back screening with Brady Manick. And that's going to be a matchup to watch. That matchup to watch. Jeremy Roach is now playing 35 minutes a game. And R.J. Davis, the guy that wins that matchup, probably will win the game. Uh, if you can contain the ball off that high ball screen, keep R.J. Davis out of the lane, you know, you've got a great chance. But if he turns the corner, dra basically drags two, and now all of a sudden becomes a playmaker, you've got problems because R.J. Davis's ability to be a playmaker, be a scorer and a shot creator, has been a difference. Duke must guard that middle ball screen. The second thing they must do is they got to make Armando Baycott defend because when he's on the floor, they're plus 330. When Armando Baycott's off the floor, they're minus 80. That's a big difference. Go at him. Go at him with Mark Williams. Get him posted up. Put him in ball screens. Attack him in those ball screens. I think those are the two things that Duke must do if they're going to win this game. Coach, see, that's why you're the best, man. You're my basketball Buddha because you nailed it. <laughs> to me, everyone wants to talk about guards. Of course they do. Jay Will can't get enough of talking about guards. Shocker, he is one. I'm a big, and I think this one comes down to those bigs. And Mark Williams, to me, has been the most important piece to the Duke Blue Devils, most especially in this tournament. A rim protector, if he's not blocking a shot, he's in the stream of consciousness from the opposition where he's affecting and altering shots. I think he's going to go at Armando Baycott. I think they're going to try and establish him, take Armando out of the game. That was a difference in the first matchup. Duke was able to roll by 20 because Armando Baycott got into some foul trouble. I expect them to do much of the same. I think it's going to be that front line that leads the way for Duke. Paolo Bancaro and Mark Williams and see if the intestinal fortitude is omnipresent for this, Duke, for this North Carolina front line. Yeah, but I think Ben Carroll's going to have to guard Brady Maddox also. And Brady Maddox is going to space the floor so and shot fake and maybe put it on the floor. So Ben Carroll's a tough matchup. You don't guard Ben Carroll with one guy. You can guard Ben Carroll with six eyes. What I mean by that is the guy that's guarding him and the two guys are in help position, they've got to have six eyes on him at all times to shrink the court a little bit, help when he drives it and spins, be in help to kind of give help, maybe get a strip, maybe get a block, but take him out of the game that way. But Maddox, on the other end, He's got to guard – Van has got to guard Manic. And Manic, you think about what he's done in the NCAA tournament. He's absolutely been terrific. The thing that makes Carolina difficult is you think about in the NCAA tournament, they've had four different leading scorers in their four wins. In their last game against Duke, those four guys that led them in scoring in the four different games went for 85 points. R.J. Davis, Love, Manic, and Baycott went for 85 points. So – Carolina, yeah. Could they get in foul trouble? The best way to beat Carolina is to go right at Baycott. Get him in foul trouble. He's a double-double machine, but they have no backup for him. There's no Knowing one that can replace him. It kind of absolutely makes their matchups across the board different. Uh, Coach, knowing that, obviously this is a huge matchup, specifically for Duke, as I said at the beginning of this. Who do you think comes out of this one? I'm picking North Carolina. I'm picking North Carolina wow. because of the way they're defending. I'm picking North Carolina because of their versatility offensively. I'm picking North Carolina because I think R.J. Davis wins that matchup with Roach, which is going to be a fun matchup to watch. And I'm picking Carolina because all the pressure is on this Duke team. 90 former players in the stands the last time they played. Those 90 guys are going to be back at it. The pressure oh. of having to take Coach K <laughs> into that championship game. I think that becomes immense. It hasn't been a factor in the NCAA tournament, but all of a sudden it's Duke and Carolina. 
And Coach, that's not make each other better, but this game's going to be a little different because it could be Coach K's last. Coach, that's not pressure. That's motivation, and we know motivation is a driving force as a coach. You guys would try to find anything to motivate us. Yeah, to create me, a cause. You want to <laughs> create a cause. That cause could also suffocate you. Okay, to, to that point, what's so fascinating to me about this matchup is the fact that we've never seen it before, obviously. But you know what else we've never seen? A team playing a national championship in the regular season mm -hmm. and have an opportunity to redeem themselves That's in good. that very season. That matchup in Cameron was a national championship for Duke. Duke fell flat. How they've responded has been nothing short of admirable. Yes, they didn't win the ACC championship. They lost to the Hokies. But it was 31 points from Hunter Couture and a ridiculous effort from that group. Mm -hmm. Duke's looked the best of any team in this NCAA tournament. You can maybe say North Carolina is right there with them. So what that game provided in Cameron three, four weeks ago was motivation for both teams, not pressure. But who has more, more motivation now? Who was the team that fell flat in that national championship game? Usually, Coach, you have to wait an entire offseason for guys to get back game? there. You're going with the old revenge game motto? I mean, come on. How I mean, that Notre Dame degree has got to be a little bit better Every than that. Every game is pressure when you have a Duke uniform on. Every game is pressure when you have a UNC uniform on. There is no difference in terms of pressure here. It's about matchups, and it's about Mark Williams growing into the player I think he has become in these last three weeks, more so than he'd been during the season. And He's he had been, been special. He's dominant He's now. Bay better guard those ball screens. Too. <laughs> it's going to be – the basket, you better guard those ball screens. Because you got to guard those, what, ball, those screens. ball screens. If you go back and look at the tape, they're going to have to change their ball screen defense. Like in the NCAA tournament, I give due credit because in the NCAA tournament, they've been down in all their ball screens or weak in all their ball screens. And they've been better at, at helping on the ball handler and getting back into play. The thing that changes is Manic spaces the court so far out, whether he's in the trail spot off the back screen or deep in the corner – it's but really, know, really difficult. Their help's got to come from Leaky Black Sky. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.